Hey guys and welcome to Deep Dive Monday. Well, uh, we're going to do part one of a two-part series on the modeling toolkit today. Okay, so let's uh, jump in. Here we go. Okay guys, well, we're in Maya 2018 and we're going to do a deep dive into the modeling toolkit in Maya. Well, um, this is going to be a two-part video. We're going to do, um, the, for the most part, we're going to cover it in this video, but there's one selection uh, in the modeling toolkit that's a bit more elaborate and we're going to cover that in a separate video uh, somewhere next week, right? Okay, so modeling toolkit, what is it, where is it, and what can you do with it? Well, if you go up to the top right corner of your workspace, there's a little symbol with a hammer and a cube. If you click on that, it will open up this uh, menu right here. Okay. Now, basically, this is a collection of tools that you can use in Maya that uh, can be found elsewhere as well. So all of these items are either in some menu somewhere or can be accessed through a shortcut. Okay. So, for example, if you hit B for soft select, you will find that uh, option here as well. Okay. All right, so what we need to do next is create a simple object so I can show you guys what all this stuff is, all right? So we're gonna take a cube, we're gonna go in, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with this little uh, top option right here where it says object. Now, if you click on that, it says show hide, freeze, unfreeze, x-ray on, off, show hide back faces, and show hide face triangles. Now, this is actually a pretty powerful option. So let's go with the show and hide first. Simple as that, boom, it's gone. You can't accidentally select your cube or anything. Let's say you got a whole lot of stuff going on in your scene and you don't want that to uh, you know, get selected by mistake or whatever. And once you want it back, you can go back in and boom, show it again and it's back. Okay, cool. So what else? If we go in here, you have freeze and unfreeze. So if I click on freeze, we can still see it, but I can't select it which again is kind of neat if you are working on something and you have all sorts of stuff in the background, you know, and you don't want to select that by accident. And you can go back in. Okay, cool. So let's see what else. Then X-ray on and off. Uh, let's say you're working with a reference image in the back and you want to be able to look straight through it, right? By clicking on that X-ray, you can do that. And we'll turn that back. Okay, what else? Uh, let's see, show and hide back faces. Now this is kind of important but it's also kind of hard to explain. So what I'll do is I'll hit four on my keyboard and what you can see right now is you see the cube with all of its faces, all six. But if you're working on something in the front, you don't necessarily want to see those lines in the back, right? So by going to hide back faces, what it will do is it will get rid of those. So you only see the ones in the front. Uh, especially helpful when you're working on, let's say, uh, rooms or something like that, okay? So I'm going to go back in here and turn that back on and there you go. And then finally in this option you have the show or hide face triangles which you can see if you look closely you now have a triangulated faces. Okay, I typically don't do that so I'm going to turn that off. All right, so that's that. Now what's going on here in the top with these buttons? Well we got from left to right an option to select objects, vertices, edges, faces or UVs. And every time you do one of these on the bottom here, it will tell you what it's doing. Right now it has one object selected. So I'm gonna go in here and hit five for shaded mode. And if I go in here and jump to the vertex mode, I can simply go in here and select a vertex. And once I do that, it will say one vertex selected, or in this case, two vertices selected. When I jump to edge mode, same deal. I can go in here and select an edge and it will tell me two edges selected. Finally, we got face mode. I can hover over my cube and it will show faces instead of vertices and edges, okay? And then finally, in the back here, we got UV selection. You can even do that. And once you do that, it will say, for example, four UVs selected. Now, then we got the multi-component here. I personally think that's kind of cool. It's kind of hard to get used to, but it works kind of neat. And basically what it does is it bases its selection on the position of your mouse. So if I hover my mouse over this face, it will show the face. If I move towards the uh, edge right here, it will do that. And if I move to the left here, it will allow me to click on that vertex, okay? So it's kind of a combination of those three. 
Okay, what else? So down here, this is all related to uh, selection methods. So uh, pick marquee method or a drag selection method. And I, you know, I don't really want to go into that because it's pretty straightforward. Okay, basically how you want to select your stuff. Now the camera base selection that is kind of cool. Uh, I don't use it a lot, but it can be convenient sometimes. If you turn that on, uh, let's say you want to make a very specific selection based on where your camera is facing like this. Now a cube is maybe not a great example, but sometimes you have situations where you want to make a selection based on the angle of the camera. That exactly, that's exactly what this does, right? So make sure to turn that off again. And then this one, pretty powerful symmetry. So let's say I want to be working on this cube both sides at the same time. Now, what you would do a lot in modeling is you would cut the model in half, work on one half, and later on you would mirror it over. But what you can do here, similar to something like ZBrush, is you can go in here and turn symmetry on for, let's say, a certain axis. So in this case, I want to select object mode and I want to be in the X axis, okay? So once I select that, if I go into, let's say, face mode, and I go in here, as soon as I hover over that right face, the le left face is selected as well. That's because I'm in object mode and I'm in X. If I go in here and I change that to a Y, the top and bottom will be selected, Z, the front and back will be selected, and so forth. And then we got the world selection as well. Yeah, but in this case, it doesn't really matter that much. If this cube were rotated, for example, it would make a difference, okay? Based on, let's say, faces you want to extrude or something, okay? All right, so let's see. I'm gonna leave those alone. We're gonna go to soft selection right here. Now, soft select is something that I use um, quite a lot. Uh, what I'll do to demonstrate here is I'll just go in here, get rid of this cube, and uh, let's see, we'll go in and take a sphere, okay? Now, soft select, let's turn that on. Uh, that is basically the equivalent of hitting B on your keyboard, so I'll do that first. So if I have a, let's say a face selected, I'll turn off that symmetry, hang on. Uh, yeah, there you go. So I've got a face selected. If I hit B on my keyboard, it will turn yellow. And if I hold down B and left click and drag, the affected uh, area will increase or decrease, okay? And then for example, if I want to move this with W, I can do that. Now, that's exactly what's happening here. So I can go into soft select, turn it on or off right here. And then I got the, um, the magnitude that I can uh, control here. So right now it's 0 0.1, let's set that to one. And you see that almost half of the sphere is affected. Let's do 0 0.1, okay? So that's how you control that. Now what's kind of neat is this. I'll set this to two, which is a big range, and then I'll go in and I'll change this curve right here. Now, what you're probably used to is if you do this, you'll kind of get this motion right here. I'll just uh, tweak this to, let's say one. Okay, something like this, right? Now what you can do is you can go in here and you can kind of control this curve right here and it will impact the shape of whatever you're doing here, okay? It's kind of neat. So you can do that. And if you're ready with all this and you don't want to do that anymore, you can just click on reset curve and it will jump back to its default and then you're good to go, right? Now I'm gonna need control Z to go back a few steps. So we've got a normal sphere again, there we go. Curve is in this normal position and we're good. Okay, so what's next? Uh, we're gonna go to the mesh menu. Now that has the combined, separate, smooth, and Boolean. Now I assume you know all these functions. They're basically default Maya, but just in case you don't, I'm going to show you, right? So uh, let's see, combine. I'll go through this fairly quickly, right? So I got a cube, I got a sphere, two separate objects. I select one, shift select the other, click on combine, and now it's one object, right? If I want to separate those, I click on separate, and now they're two different objects, okay? So what about smooth? Let's say I want to smooth this cube. Now if I hit three on my keyboard, I will do a preview smooth. Now that is not actually a smooth. This is what it would look like. I'll hit one to go back. But here the smooth is an actual smooth. So once I click on this, it's gonna ask me, okay, what is the division level do you want? One, I'm gonna go with three which will make it nice and divided, right? Okay, so that's what that does. It controls you to go back. 
So let's see, combine, separate, smooth, and then we've got Boolean. Now, let's say I want this cube to be uh, intersected with this sphere, right? So uh, let's uh, bring that in here, something like this, select one, shift select the other, go into Boolean, and then we have the option. What do we want? Do we want this to be a union, a difference, or intersection? I want this to be a union, okay? So what happens now, if I hit four on my keyboard, you will see that the part of the cube that went into the sphere is now gone, right? And that's why it's called a union. Okay, let's go back to where we were. So that covers all of that. Let's see, then we're gonna go to components. And let's see, let's make sure we got everything here. I don't wanna miss out on everything. Okay, so components, right? Um, same deal there basically a lot of default things but i'll go through them quickly anyway right so the extrude button i'm going to go up here select a face click on extrude and i got soft select turned on looks like let's turn that off yeah so boom boom there we go and we got the typical options to choose from okay uh let's see what else bevel uh let's go and select a an edge right there and let's click on bevel and then we have the option and that didn't work let's do that again bevel there you go and there you go you can tweak that right i'm gonna go back there you go uh, let's see extrude bevel uh bridge is kind of neat so if you don't know how that works we got a cube i'm gonna shift select my sphere i'm gonna go in here to combine that's kind of necessary if you want to do this kind of thing i'm going to go to face mode select this face delete it select one face here delete it i'm going to jump to edge mode double click on this and shift double click on this come on now i should hold down shift that will work better i guess yeah my apologies new keyboard yeah Okay, so we've got all of that, and then we're going to go to bridge. Now, as we do that, we've got the usual options. Increase the number of divisions. Do I want this to taper or not? Do I want it twisted or not? Uh, all that kind of cool stuff, okay? So we're going to hit Control-Z to go back. Back, 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 back. Get the faces back in place. And there we go. That should be good. Uh, let's see. And then finally add divisions. Now I love that one. Okay. So let's do that with our cube. I'm going to go to object mode, select my cube. I don't want these combined anymore. So I'm going to go to separate, take my cube, and then I'm going to go to add division. Now, once I do that, it does exactly that, right? I can go in and I can click on it again and again and again and again. And that is a perfect way of adding divisions. Okay. Now, then we have the tool menu, and the tool menu is something that I want to cover with you guys in the next video because, uh, like I said, there's a little bit more to it, right? So hopefully you guys enjoyed this part of the deep dive into the modeling toolkit, and I'll probably do part two uh, next Monday. That said, thank you very much for watching. Um, if you like my videos, please hit that subscribe button and make sure you get notified. And that said, thank you very much for watching, and see you guys next time.